The regressive left is a term that was popularized a little over a year ago, mainly on the Dave Rubin show, and since then has taken like wildfire. Many people, myself included, have been using it often as a derogatory term, but without bothering to properly define it. There have been attempts at definition, but not comprehensive ones. As a leftist myself, and as someone who studies the history of culture and knows how these matters develop, I am worried that pretty soon the entire left will be tarred with this label. So, before this happens, I am starting this new video series in which I will try to distinguish the regressive left from the liberal left, and examine how regressive views have crept their way into leftist discourse. The left needs an enema, and it starts with identifying the crap that we want to wash out. In this video, the first part of the series, I will just define what I call left, and consequently what I call right. Many people nowadays are confused even about these labels. So before I start talking about the regressive left, let's first begin by defining the left, and what distinguishes it from the right. Let's start with the right. The right wing, the way I see it, believes that our society, that is, whatever society it is the right wing of, is built on good foundations, and wants to conserve these foundations. Usually there's some foundational text, like the Holy Scriptures or the Constitution, which is the foundation that the right wants to conserve, but it can also be traditions and customs. The most extreme form of right-wingers are the fundamentalists, those who believe that the foundational text should be followed to the letter and in the most literal sense. If it was good enough for Moses, 3500 years ago, then it's good enough for today's society, and that's what we should live by. But the vast majority of right-wingers aren't fundamentalists, they are what I will call conservatives. They believe the foundational text is a good guide, but realize that we should update our reading of it to fit with the changing times. They follow the spirit of the text, not a literal reading. There are basically three types of conservative approaches. One is to say that our society is the best human society that can possibly be, and there's no need to change anything. A more common approach is to say that our society can be improved, but its foundational values are good, so all we have to do is continue on the course we are on, and we will eventually achieve the best possible society. And the third approach, also quite common, is to say that our society used to be on the right course to becoming the best society, before it was derailed by leftist policies, so if we want to achieve the best society we must reverse these policies and put ourselves back on the right track. This last stance is unique in that it is both conservative and rebellious. So that was the right. Now what about the left? Well, the left believes in the progress of humankind, and believes that the society we have today is better than any society that existed in the past. That means that it doesn't believe that anything made in the past should be our guide to the best society. Rather, the left believes in a set of abstract ideals, like freedom, equality, justice and peace, and aspires to create a society that lives up to these ideals. Our current society does not live up to them, so we must criticize it for its unfreedoms, inequalities and injustices, and push it to fix itself and progress towards a better society. The left, too, has its extremists, which I will term radicals. The radicals basically believe that humans are by nature rational and moral, and capable of existing in a utopian state of total freedom, equality, justice and peace. What prevents us from living in such a state are the traditions and texts that rule our lives, and the crooked system that is built on these foundations. Thus, the radical leftists believe that the system is an oppressive force that is alien to human nature, and must be brought down so that utopia can prevail. But most leftists are not radicals. They are what I will term liberals. The liberal realizes that human nature isn't completely rational and benevolent, and the imperfect society that we live in is the result of this imperfect nature. Progress is achieved by a slow process in which we identify instances of systemic oppression, inequality and injustice, and use our rationality to devise something better. We can never achieve a perfect society, but we can constantly progress and improve. Liberals who live in the Western democratic societies of today realize that at least for now we have no better system, so our goal is not to bring the whole system down but just to tweak it. And since the founding values of these societies are the enlightenment values of freedom, equality and justice, conservatives and liberals agree on the basics that their society should be based on, and are therefore able to resolve their differences through political, non-violent struggle. This dialogue between liberals and conservatives, with the former trying to change traditions and the latter struggling to preserve them, drove Western society to constantly improve itself in the last couple of centuries, as only the smart and valuable new ideas presented by the liberals managed to overcome the initial resistance of the conservatives and take root, whereas the stupid and destructive liberal ideas were eventually defeated. 
The radicals, in the meantime, contributed little to nothing to the progress of Western civilization, although they always find a way to revise history to make it seem like they did a lot. Martin Luther King, for instance, was a liberal who worked within the American system and had the support of the federal government. Some of his views were radical, but not in the area where he succeeded in bringing about change. When it came to race relations, he was not a radical who worked to bring the American system down, but a liberal who merely demanded of America to live up to its own values. For that he was reviled and scorned by the leftist radicals of the time, who regarded him as a shill. Nowadays, radicals hold him up as an example of someone who went against the system and defeated it, as if he was one of them. In such ways, radicals always convince themselves that their views and actions have merit. Thankfully, these radicals are usually marginalized, but there are times in history in which they become stronger, and now, for reasons which we will discuss, is one of those times. But there is something curious about it this time, something that distinguishes it from previous time that this has happened. In the past, the radicals always presented a very clear alternative to the society they were trying to revolutionize, a portrait of a utopian society that they claimed was within our reach. Nowadays, the idea of utopia is no longer popular or appealing to the Western mind, so the radicals deny, to themselves as well as to others, that that is what they want. However, since they are still driven by the radical ideas of the past, the criterion by which they are judging Western society is a utopian criterion, and because of that they denounce it for being irredeemably oppressive, unequal and unjust. What we call a regressive leftist, then, is a radical who is not presenting any utopian alternative, but is still condemning Western society for not living up to utopian standards. Because of that, it is harder for the general public to identify them as radicals. You have to follow the logic to the end to realize the utopianism underneath it all, and most people don't have the time to do that. And so, many people who are liberal in their views erroneously believe that these regressives are liberals like them, people who do not want to overthrow the system but only to criticize its problems. They end up supporting these regressives, whereas if they carefully listened to what they are saying they would have realized that they have a worldview that is profoundly different from theirs. Most leftists are liberals, but many of them today are passive aggressives, unknowingly being dragged along for the right by the radical left. For that reason, it is important that we highlight the distinctions between liberal and regressive thought. Those of us on the left who have woken up to the problem find ourselves in alliance with that third type of conservatives I mentioned. We agree with them that Western society has gone off the track, and that the left is responsible for it. Because of that, many liberals are asking themselves if they are still left-wing at all, and wondering what makes them different from those right-wingers. Well, again, I would say that the difference lies in where you take your guidance from. Right-wingers rely on a tradition that they believe is the best manifestation of freedom, equality and justice. Whereas I, as a leftist, still believe that tradition is something that should be criticized and rebelled against in the name of freedom, equality and justice. My problem with the regressive leftists is that in all their confusion, in the fervent condemnation of Western society without having a clear vision of an alternative, they have ended up adopting attitudes that go against freedom, equality and justice. They have turned back on enlightenment values, and are taking us backwards instead of forward. And that is why they are the regressive left. What are the ways in which they have regressed? What are the things that distinguish a liberal from a regressive? That is what we will discuss in this series.